Welcome to another episode of Whiteboard Project Management YouTube channel. In this episode, we will go through another part of project management, this time the communication management in the projects. If you are interested and you are new here, consider subscription to the channel. In this channel, we explain the tools and techniques used in the project management in a practical way. Grab your cup of coffee and let's start the session. Talking about communication methods and ways. There are uh, many types of communication, so consider yourself as a part of a team in a project and you are going to the work every day morning. First thing what you are doing, you are opening your uh, computer and you start your uh, watching your emails, what is new in the project. So you open your email uh, provider, let's say Outlook, Microsoft Outlook. So you open your Outlook and you check your emails. So that is a way of communication. First, you are checking your emails. Meanwhile, when you, while you are checking your emails, you receive a phone call from your colleague. So you are talking with your colleague and you are discussing with your colleague by phone. At that time, you receive from your project manager or you as a project manager, you plan a meeting with a client or with um, a team member to for the progress follow up. So you plan a meeting and you are you can see in your calendar that you have already scheduled some meetings. So you sit with your team and you discuss with them. So let's go through these things and let's explain it on the whiteboard. So we said that you have emails and you have also communication through phones and through verbal. You are meeting with, we meet with your uh, colleagues and talking. So you have verbal, verbal communication, which you are doing on your daily basis as a normal procedure. Meanwhile, you open your Outlook and you receive some email and you want to tell your colleagues and your, your, your client and your stakeholders about some new information about the project. So you are sending them an email. So that is a written way. So the communication could be written or could be verbal. Meanwhile, the communications could be considered as formal communication and non-formal communication. The formal communication is the way where you are communicating with your team or with your client or with your vendors, your stakeholders of the project in a very formal way. This is considered as a formal document of the project. This is the could be only through the written way. So I will write here a simple block where you are here having the formal and the non-formal way. That means you have the communication, which is divided into like four types. You have the formal way, you have the non-formal way. This formal way is the official distribution of some information or official distribution of a procedure. The non-formal is the normal communication with your client, with your vendors, with your team members. Also, you have the verbal communication and the written communication. So let's start filling what we have here. So if you are receiving an email and you are replying an email, this is definitely a written way. But the email could be, uh, could be uh, specified in your project 
or in your contract exactly, as a way of communication. It's not the formal way. It's a way of communication. It's like in the old, old days, you had used everything through your post office or you, through your faxes. Some companies are still using faxes, but the faxes this, these days are reduced as a minimum. And most of the companies, almost all of the companies are using now emails in an official way of method of communication. So the email is a method of communication. What you are sending the information in this, in this email, this is just a transmitting of the data, transmitting of the information to the other part. Means this is a non-formal way of the written. So here I will write emails. Now moving to the other part where you have the formal way when you are uh, as a project manager you want to distribute something officially and you are writing an official letter to the client or to your stakeholder. So this is a letter. The letter has a stamp, has a head, a head letter on you, of your company and have a signature. So this is another way. This is letters. So this is a formal written way, the letters. This has the most values of the communication method. Verbal non-formal non way, like when you are receiving your phone call from your colleague and you are just discussing about something and make some plan for something else or discussing about a problem in the project. So this is a normal discussion means this is like a phone call. Okay. And you have also a formal verbal way where you are sitting with your colleagues and you have a meeting, you are trying to solve something or you are reviewing the progress of your project and this is the way of communication where you are meeting with your team. This is a formal way because you are sending and you are calling for a formal meeting. You are calling for a formal meeting. You sit with your colleagues. You discuss everything. So this is considered as a formal, but this is a verbal way. So here you have meetings. From meetings, you could have an MOM. This is the um, MOM is the minutes of meeting where the team members can sign it. And we are moving this meeting level from formal verbal way to another written non-formal way because this is only an MOM. But the letters which are having the highest uh, the highest value of the of the project is the formal written way sometimes the mom as a per, uh, according to your contract could be moved to a formal written way so this is a simple way of types of communication consider and always have that that the letters have the most of, uh, official value of the information. This is the most used uh, way because it is a verbal non-formal. This is a daily used uh, communication, the written non-formal, the emails as well, and the formal verbals as well. So this is, let's say one, one, two, and three. And level three is the highest level of inf official information. Okay, now, not all the team members are working similarly. Some team members are reaching to the office, they open their PC and they just read the emails and they send one email a day while they are receiving so many emails. 
other colleagues, they reach to, to the office, they open their computer, and they start sending one email one after the other. Other type of colleagues, they sit, they wait for the email to come, and then they will just reply on the same email. So there are different type of uh, people which are using different strategies of the uh, communication. So the strategies of communication, we have person A here, and we have person B over here. You are transmitting the information from person A to person B through some way or method of communication. The method of communication could be by email, could be by fax, or could be by post office, or whatever. So this is only a way of communication here. But person A had started the communication with person B. So he is trying like he is bombing person B for something. So either person A want to send something means he is pushing the information to person B and person B start having so many tasks to complete. That means this person is pulling the information towards person B or pushing, exactly, pushing the information to person B. So you as a project manager, you come to your office and you, you find so many emails from your client and you want to distribute it to your team. You start, com send your team uh, many informations and you start send them to-do list, new to-do tasks. So you start sending the emails to your team and this is the push, the push communication. So you are pushing the communication to your, to your team. The other way where you as a project manager, you are here and person B is replying and communicating to each task or each to do you send to him. So each email you are sending, he is replying and it generates another loop of emails regarding the same task. Okay, this is the interactive communication. So that means for each one task, you are generating so many emails between person A and B, and those two persons are communicating for the same task and this is the interactive communication. This is a very effective way of communication because you are sharing your information. Now, you can say why those persons are sending emails if they can communicate verbally, they can communicate by phone. Yes, they can. But the team, the two persons could have different locations uh, in different geograph geographic locations, ge different um, time zones, and they have, each one has different tasks to do. Means that person A, when he sent the email, he could receive an immediate action from, or reply from person B, or he could receive it within, let's say, few hours or within one day or within two days, because person B could be also in, uh, assigned to another project and he's solving another way, another things. Or he could be in, uh, uh, a business trip. So this is the interactive communication. This is a very effective way of communication. The other uh, type of communication when you come to your office, you as a project manager, as a project, as person A, you are sending so many information 
to you to person B and you received no answers. So you start bombing person B and you start telling them, give me this one, give me that one, give me this information about the milestone, give me this information about uh, your progress, give me this information about this. And you start bombing that person to give you the information. So that is, I will mention this way, that is the pull communication. I'm trying to pull the information from this person because this person has the information which I need for my project, which I need to send back to my client. And my client is waiting for the information from me. But I have people, I have my team, I have so many team to communicate with and me as a project manager, when I'm communicating with person B, he is interactively communicating. Another person C could use the pull communication. That means he is, he have the information, but he could be in a different way. He could be lazy person, or he could be having so many tasks that he don't have time to send emails because he's working on a design person, design uh, method, or you could push the information to person D. So you are using different methods of communication with each person. You as a project manager, this is your responsibility to read every person and to know how to communicate with each person from your team or from the client. Sometimes the client is not familiar with new technologies of using a video conference because he is an old version, or uh, he could have no uh, suitable suitable hardware and software for this. Now, nowadays, everyone has has a mobile phone where we can install every every software. There are so many free softwares even to use a video conference, but not all are suitable with this. Because the project has so many team members and has so many stakeholders, the client, the vendors, the team, mem uh, team members. So all those team creates a huge number of communication between all the parties. Here we will discuss the number of links which could occur on your team. So let us consider that we have a small project with five stakeholders. So you have member A, B, C, D, and E. Those five team members are communicating between each other. So how many number of links could be created from those team members. So first one, A is communicating with all, B is communicating with all, okay, this is the same communication, so I will reduce one communication. I will mention it in two directions, so it will be easier. C is communicating with B, with A, with D, with E, and with A. Then D is communicating with A, B, C, and E, and E is communicating with A, B, C, and D. So how many number of links has been created in this simple way? If you just calculate it, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10.
10 number of communications has been created between five team members. In another way, so if you have five team members and each member is sending to you per day one email, you are receiving at least minimum of 10 emails per day. And if you can say that those team members are doing so many tasks, they are communicating in a pull communication or push communication or interactive communication. So if you say that each member send so many emails and you are a type, a member of this so small project team, so you can consider how many emails you end up by each end of the day. So those are the number of links which are used. There is a formula for uh, calculating the number of um, uh, links. The number of links are n, n minus one over two. The number or the factor n is the number of the team members. So here we have five, that means five by five multiplied by five minus one over two. Five minus one is four, five by four is 20, 20 over two is 10. This is the same number of communication links. So here we go, we have the number of uh, team, we have five teams, we have 10 links. If we have so many teams are involved from the client side, from the stakeholders and from the uh, vendors, which you have the subcontractors, which you are buying the, the material or the service from them, and you have your team members as well. So you could end up with having at least 50, 50 uh, links. So you can say 50 multiplies by 49 over two, and you can calculate it and you can see how many links are generated in this uh, simple or in this uh, number of team members in your project. Okay, we explained how many links could be generated in your project, how many emails you could, could receive every day from only communications through emails. So you are ending up by the end of the day reading only hundreds of emails you are receiving and you don't have time to even to um, complete your work and your tasks planned for this day. There is a method where I will explain it here, which is very simple and you can use it and you can share the correct information and reduce the number of links. For you as a project manager, this is very important for you to set the communication on the beginning of the project. So each member know how, with whom to communicate and in what occasion to communicate to whom Get, get the information from whom and report it to whom. So uh, you need to create, first of all, you need to create your organizational chart. The organizational chart is a, is a hierarchical chart where you have the team members. You as a project manager, you are here, you have the team members. So you have the planning, you have the engineering, you have the quality, and you have the procurement. Meanwhile, you have the finance. Here you have the 
goes control and others means I just put the team in the way of uh, levels of uh, the project and below the, the engineering you could have the, uh, the this is the engineering manager below it you can have the process team you can have the electrical you can have the civil you can have the mechanical the instrumentation the software dcs and others below the planning you can have the scheduling you can have the planning site engineer and others the finance you can have also a team below the quality you can have the quality inspection the quality control you can have the quality insure assurance and others the procurement same procurement agent the procurement agent two and others means i have so many team members over here but i put everyone in simple way to whom he is belonging means the project let's say the project engineer or the engineering manager who is under the project manager here he is in charge of those people he is in charge of his sub team okay those are nominated team members who are below this person and this person is below the project manager for this specified project in another project this person could be in different position here the planning as same for the planning they have a sub team same for let's say the procurement and the others <coughs> means i have now clearly reduce the team members because here if you calculate that each block is one p one team member you can calculate how many team members we have if we have let's say here this is only for you as as a contractor or as a client and you have you are communicating with others so there are hundreds of of stakeholders in the project you are ending off hundreds and thousands of of link as possible communication links where you need to reduce it just in this organizational chart you put those people under one person and you are telling this person that i am or the project manager is in charge of you those other people are in the same level of of you but those team are reporting for reporting for you in another way those team you as a project manager you are not receiving the communications from those people unless you are specifying it in the responsibility assigned matrix we will come to it soon so if those team members are not specified in the responsibility assigned matrix to report to the project manager that means those team are reporting only to the engineering manager and the engineering manager is creating the communication links in between those team and sending you only what you need to the project manager another way one two three four five six six team members you can calculate the number of links uh, six, six by six by five ta uh, divided by two and you are reducing it with one link six by five by two 
reduced up to one link only. Okay, same for the others. So you as a project manager, you are now receiving one, two, three, four, five main communication links. Also the cost control, this is, this is an external control on you, but for the other project team, you reduced all these. Same for the engineering manager. He is not receiving emails from this person and this person and this person and this person because he is communicating with his team and he is communicating for the upper level. Consider it this way. This is level one, level two, level three. So people under one block in level three are communicating with each other. People in level two, they are managing the communication below them and they are reporting to level one. Level one is the project management and they are reporting to the director of, project, of the projects and the general management of the project. Okay, now the responsibility assigned matrix are important for you as a project manager to set it in the beginning of the project. So the responsibility assigned matrix is a simple matrix where you have your project team So you are saying that I have person A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. Those are the members, the team members of the project when you are specifying them. And you are saying I have Task A, task B, task C, task D. I will put all in a small letter. Okay, so you have the tasks and you have the persons. Uh, you need just to simply specify it and you say task A. This person is in charge, this person is in charge, and the others are. So you are just saying that, okay, in the responsibility assigned matrix, you are saying that this person is responsible, accountable, inform. So you can use the letters responsible, accountable, inform. You can put these shortcuts here, or you can use another way where you can just mention T and C. T is two, C is CC. B could be as a BCC, where you are using the emails, which is very in a very simple way. So not all the, the, the project team could read what is, what is the meaning of responsible inform and, 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 and inform means send it Shall I put, it, put him in two? Shall I put him in CC, in BCC? So you can use these letters and you can say, okay, for task A, put it to two, to this person, two, to this person, CC, those people. Task B, you can say, okay, put all those people in two and this is in CC. This is depends on the type of the tasks and you fill this form. Once you fill this form, you distribute it to all your team and your team knows that when this person is, person A is responsible for task A, let's say, or task B, and he want to sh uh, share the information, he know to whom, send, to whom he have to send the email to and whom will be in CC to be informed.
Now we reached to the key uh, progress where you need to set all your uh, communication methods and all your communication ways for how many times regularly you have to repeat them. So you make a simple, again, a simple table which will be clear to everyone where you will say this is a daily, this is weekly, this is monthly, quarter, and year per year. So I will say first that I need a brainstorm meeting Brainstorm meeting. What is a brainstorm meeting? The brainstorm meeting could be used every day at for for half an hour to sit between to sit between the management uh, of the project to just to review the tasks and the main tasks and the critical parts. So this could be set as regular as daily. Then you have progress meetings where you need progress meetings, where you need those progress meetings to sit with your client, with your team. So you can set that progress meeting with your team, T progress meeting, and you can say it's weekly and every Wednesday. Then you have progress meetings, with the client and you could have it also weekly but every Monday. Then you could have a progress reports and this could be monthly and you can see you can specify here uh, end of month okay then you can say okay i have another progress which is every quarter and i have a review lessons learned review every year let's say okay so this is this table will be clear to everyone to be set in your project management plan in the communication management to specify all these items. You can specify others according to your project. You specify them and you put the regular of uh, frequently repeating of those activities. So every team and every person and the project admin should know these things and he or she have to put all these things in your project calendar. So you as a project manager, you know that you have a meeting every day as a brainstorm meeting. You have a weekly meeting with your team. Every Wednesday, you have a monthly, uh, a, a weekly progress meeting with the client every Monday and others. And you have the progress reports and others. So if there is any meeting in between or somebody requests to to schedule a meeting with you so you know that these dates and times are fixed and you have to follow them. A project without a plan is a failed project. You have to always think about your planning of uh, all types of uh, project uh, here communication and this with this you will be very satisfied and you will be very easy for it will be very easy for you to manage your project Thank you for watching this episode and for using Whiteboard Project Management YouTube channel as your educational platform. If you like the video, 
hit like, subscribe, and share it with the other people. See you in the next episode.